So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. Um, welcome to Spiritual Question Time. For those of you who are new to Spiritual Question Time, um, let me just say that it is um, what one might call an inquiry. It's a question and answer based inquiry in which um, our guest speakers will answer questions from you, the audience, and maybe if things go quiet I may ask, ask a question or two myself. And the idea is that um, you, the audience, the live audience, participate as much as possible. It is uh, your, your contribution is not just welcome, but actually highly desirable. Um, I'm here, my name is Glenn, Glenn Moore, I'm just here to hold the, um, to, to hold the thing together and to, to keep um, things going. So, hopefully that will work. Um, tonight's topic is service. And tonight we're talking about service, service to the world, service to the planet, service to each other, service in all its different forms. Um, what is service? How does it work? Um, how important is service? Is it important at all? Um, are we fulfilling our true service potential in the world? Um, and to assist us with that topic, um, I would like to welcome my two distinguished guests, esteemed guests. Um, on my immediate right is Mari Hollander. Mari um, first came to Finhorn in 1976. She's been here for almost 40 years. She was um, the uh, management focalizer for seven years. She um, spent five years on air aid. She um, was um, a, uh, um, a parent, was a foundation parent, Marie, at um, the Steiner School here in Moray. And um, she's also been involved in Eco Village. She's been involved in um, many things, um, was also a um, uh, kindergarten teacher and um, she has 40 years experience of service, which I'm sure she can use to share with us this evening. So thank you for, really for joining us. Um, on her right and uh, further to along there is um, Roger Doudna. <laughs> Roger came here first in 1974 and um, his, he was schooled in international relations, in, um, uh, in broadcasting in effect. He did um, documentary work, filmmaking and also philosophy. Um, he has a, um, uh, has a uh, as the Greek philosopher, ancient Greek philosophers said, um, they have something in common, Mr. Diogenes, who said that my claim to fame is that I live in a barrel. And Roger <laughs> lives in one of the barrel houses in the park. And um, uh, he's, uh, his, his, his house, was, I think, was the first house, first house to be built in the park back in 1985, 1986. Um, Roger is also um, also founded the Finthorn Fellowship, which comprises 130 um, visionaries and uh, people around the world who are looking to create a better world for all of us. So welcome to you both. Thank you very much for joining. And um, I'd like to kick off, if I may, um, by asking you both um, what, 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 what for you is service? What does it mean for you? Roger? Well, um, by way of preparation for the evening, I actually looked up the word <laughs> in uh, my big dictionary and discovered that there are 27 different meanings the word service. But the first one is simply an act of assistance or help. Um, to my mind, that's probably the core meaning of the word. It has, I mean, obviously, military service, academic service, foreign service, all kinds of services. Um, but essentially, you know, it's, it's something which, does, which speaks to an act of helping or assisting. Um, like 
some people, uh, more people in the past than these days, I think, uh, I came up through, uh, I came here through a path which was influenced by the Alice Bailey work, the Arcane School. And um, she speaks a lot about service, particularly world service. And when I first encountered uh, Findhorn people, it was in San Francisco um, at a big event which was being held in the Civic Auditorium in honor of the imminent arrival of the Comet Kahujek, which never appeared. <laughs> but nevertheless, it was a good excuse for a party, and um, you know, all the, uh, all the weird people in the Bay Area came together. Uh, in the bowels of that event was uh, this group from Vindhorn, and they, they were speaking in, in terms which resonated with Alice Bailey type stuff, so that, uh, that was one of my, my immediate connections. But, you know, when Alice Bailey talks about service, I think she, she speaks of it in terms of, you know, something which, when you engage in it, enables you to get yourself out of the way. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in addressing the task, your preoccupation with yourself, your own hang-ups and so forth, it's kind of like, get out of the way so you can actually get into the stream or the flow of whatever the energy might happen to be. And I think that's how I relate to service at Fintel. Mm. You know, whenever I take on a task, even if it's just something as simple as doing a tour, I just find that it, it, it has un unanticipated delights that I never imagined. And I oftentimes have to get, get through my personal resistance to uh, spending a Sunday afternoon, you know, doing a, an experience with a tour. But it, they always turn out to be events of extraordinary. Juice and, 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 and you know, they're wonderful. You especially get a sense of, of you know, why people come here, like where they come from, and just hearing them speak that, you know, it's enough to sort of like recharge my sense of connection with the place. Mm -hmm. I thought that in general terms of what, what service means to me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Larry. Yeah, also needed to think about it, and uh, as I was prompted, that would be the theme. Um, and and we use, I think, we use the word you know, planetary service, and service is one of our three, you know, inner listening co-creation service. Um, and and I realized how much I I I understand it much the way Roger describes. It. I don't have to repeat any of that. Um, but I also want. Eh, it feels a little. Mm -hmm. The more I thought about it, the more uncomfortable I actually became <laughs> with the concept of service per se, even though I'm sure that it's been sort of my life mission, as it is for most of us here, because that's why we're here. Um, and just this evening, my sense was like, being in attunement or presencing is service. Um, service is, is contributing what we have to contribute, what, whatever it is we have to contribute, whenever we have to contribute. It's, Kind of about saying yes, but sometimes that yes might sound like no, as a as a yes. <laughs> you know, it doesn't. Um, so so my my picture of service. Yes, world servers. I went through the Alice Bailey loops for a while, um, and it sits with me, you know, with some comfort. But more and more, it feels like what you were telling me anyway. Be myself, but <laughs> camera. Um, yeah. but just just. Being who we are, giving what we have to give, and giving that good attention. You know, the the other thought I had about service is like, put your own oxygen mask on first before you help. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's there's you know, or love thy neighbor as thyself, which means love thyself and thy neighbor. Um, so there's a kind of, and you actually describe it because by giving you receive, and I I you know that's certainly one of Peter's core teachings. Um, just give a lot and it will come, and it does. So there's, so, you know, and if we're all interdependent or even all one, um, <laughs> who's the giver and receiver anyway? Um, it's just what's happening now. It's just what's arising. It's just what's emerging. It's just what's needed. It's what's wanted. It's what's able. All of those, um, and uh, I think um, even for, yeah, even for us here, 
we could look for other languaging for service without losing the the contribution part to it. But yeah, so I got to it like being in good, being in really sweet attunement is service. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the audience on what you've heard? What's the feeling in the audience? What do you think service means? What does it mean to you? Anyone? Is service the right word? At Fintor we talk about love in action. Um, and service maybe has had in the past something of a perhaps not entirely positive connotation. How else would you... Yes, please. I was um, thinking about a monastery from the Benedictines, where right. I was, and they have the quote and the motto, um, Ora et labora, ora et labora, that means work and pray. Mm -hmm. And I think in a lot of cultures and in a lot of ideologies, people are thinking of those two things, praying, maybe meditation, and working in this context, love in action. So I think it's not only in Fintorn, but in lots of communities that you see that back. Mm -hmm. And your your own experience does that is that something you've embraced and yes, uh, does yes, that I, work I, for I've you? Seen it in the monastery, and, and I've seen it uh, here. Oh, beautiful! Yeah, yeah. Yes. What I like about the word service is that it has serving in it, and that I ask myself, you know, am I who am I serving? Am, am I serving the whole? Am I serving the good of the whole? So that's actually how I understand service, that I'm not self-serving, that I'm a part, an active participant of, of creation, so to say. Mm. And am I serving the good of the whole, that that is service to me. Mm. Mm. It's interesting to consider how we would know what the good of the whole actually is, how we identify it. But we do sort of have a sense of it, don't we? I mean, um, I, I certainly know when I'm doing something kind of completely for myself, especially when it is like buying something I don't need, which I really covet, <laughs> instead of like on Friday evening taking a bath kind of to restore my, my body from a busy week. That's, that's different. But, but so it's, it's by knowing what it is not, I think, that I gauge what the good of the whole is. But yeah, how, how can you, how do you know the good of the whole? Mm -hmm. Well, it's an interesting yeah. question. I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I guess that, um, I mean, you know, insofar as you trust the people who are asking you to do something, then essentially is like responding to their request. But in terms of trying to get a sense about what the need is, that's a really interesting exercise. And I think there's a lot of projection going on there too, I have to say. How do you how do you understand whether you're just projecting your own fantasies as opposed to really tuning into an existing need? But on the other hand, it also seems to me that you know genuine needs make themselves perfectly apparent. You know, I mean, Isn't it also a matter of intention, with what the intention behind any act is? Yeah. I think that's part of it, but you know, the road of whatever, the road to various places can be by good intentions. Um, yeah. So that's not only, but I, I would still go back to if whoever, if the, each one of us, if me, um, <clears throat> is tuning in to what, what I, can do or should not do, <laughs> um, then that's my service. And it's not really for me to judge an artist or an engineer or a cook <coughs> or a driver or a, uh, whatever. Um, cause if, they are, if they're actually kind of doing their life mission, their life purpose. I mean, there's an Ayin quote that I've always liked about if everyone, everyone's got a piece of the puzzle. And that's just not everyone at the Finhorn community. It's like everyone on the planet has a piece of the puzzle. And to the extent that piece is positioning itself in where it, where it belongs, there is, you know, so there is a kind of meta view that it, that it makes sense, which is already a presumption. <laughs> 
but it, you know, under the meta view that it makes sense, um, and there is a kind of creative intelligence that embodies us and we can embody, then, then being the piece of the puzzle that we best can be, best is already, it's a judgment word as well, that, that we're giving, yeah, you know, that we're giving our all to, our full heart to, um, then that's the service. And it, it may not look like, you know, a soup kitchen or a, <laughs> I mean, there, I was just saying, there's nursing service and military service and church service and um, uh, some kind of, uh, I'm sure there's some sort of detention service as well. <laughs> anyway, there's- It's there a prison is, service. Yeah, prison, yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the 27 meanings of service. Mm. Um, yeah, there's a bit of a military connotation, isn't there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or or the waiter kind of serves us yeah. the meal. But that's you know that's an you know waiters in a way they or maids or whatever when they are serving you know if you think of um, so that's and they are pretty much required to be selfless about it. Mm. <laughs> it's totally not about the maid or the waiter. Um, it's about what you know, the recipient of that service wants and needs. So I guess it is, in a way, a kind of a good archetype to uh, well, I have a question. play with. I mean, a number of you have been sitting here uh, together all week. Um, in principle, I believe, tuning in to uh, what the world is asking or expecting from the community at this point in time. To what extent has there been unanimity? To what extent have we have you all named the same thing? Who's been here this week? How about you, Christine? <laughs> yeah, it's, been, it's it's been a different experience to that, and it's more about different initiatives that are bubbling up that are all kind of contributing to this sense of service in the world and that we all have different offerings to make to this within our departments or areas or so rather than kind of agreeing on you know I think there has been some of you some recognition that this is a transformational field that we're all part of and that we're all contributing to and that we're all kind of holding so a sense of resonance there I think it's fair to say and I think there's a unanimous consensus that the, the significance of the founding principles and how relevant they are today and how they're um, that, that just uh, still, it's not like we have to throw them out. They're still like so totally part of who we are, so I think there's an agreement there. Um, but beyond that, I don't, I don't think I've, ex it's not been about what do we agree on really. I mean, with the sense of that the, the coming up with a very clear purpose, that's, that there's been various voices around that. But there's certainly been, we haven't really gone and said, okay, we're presenting this, is there support in the room? But it's not been about that for me. There's been a few things presented in terms of possibly like a new structure that we could create, and in one group I was in, there was full support for it. But we haven't sat like 70 co-workers in the room saying, this is what we're going to do, shall we go forward? What I've really enjoyed about the times when we've had the open space and the creativity has been coming out. And there's, it's all about the different contributions. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think that's an interesting to say. I like what you said when, um, when I think we are. I, I imagine most of us are here through this sense of service and being in service. And, and as you were talking before, I was, what came to me was kind of you being being in service to God and being in service to the world. And, um, but there's um, something around um, oh, there's something else that I've kind of lost it now, but what I'm interested in is that this, the, the balance between uh, the service, like where does where does the kind of service end? <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, because it doesn't. And then, so where's that sense of balance? If we're here in service, I think it's something I'm playing with. Like, mm -hmm. 
I'm so passionate and engaged and inspired. And, um, but then, of course, there needs to be some rest from that. Exactly. And yeah. so, where are the. It's not that there's boundaries to the surface, but how to have a healthy sense of mm -hmm. relating your mask to the first. Yeah. <laughs> and the yes and the no in that. Mm -hmm. So, I'd love to explore that more, like healthy service. Mm -hmm. Not compulsive service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the thing you know, it is like, where does the intention come from? Yeah. Well, there's a syndrome here, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Namely, mm -hmm. that you come and you get inspired by the place and you want to make a contribution mm -hmm. and you keep on. And, and when people hear that, they, they come to you and they ask you to make a contribution, whether it's tours or whatever it is, you know. Um, and you. Uh, Keep on saying yes until you realize that if you keep on saying yes, you're going to burn out, or perhaps you burn out before you realize it, and and you have to sort of like start saying no, and that's really a, a core part of, of the experience here, mm -hmm. and I think it's about what you're basically pointing to, you know, namely um, how much of yourself can you give away in some sense. And I think each, each person has to obviously come to their own conclusion. Mm -hmm. But there's also a certain sense in which you know, you're, 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 you're watching to see who can handle how much, <laughs> especially if you're in a managerial role. <laughs> so you can keep shoving responsibility in that person's direction. Um, it's a fascinating thing, as I say. It's, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a syndrome, which I think we all experience from one level or not. So eventually, those of you who haven't been here very long, I guarantee you, you will. <laughs> um, and it's a fascinating question as to where you start, where you start drawing the line. I think it can ebb and flow mm, in, yeah. in each of us at different times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rondas says, you know, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, ebb and flow. You gotta go back in after you've been out there for a while. Before in breath, out, out breath. Out, in breath, out breath. Is Spengler's version yeah, yeah. or? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I mean one of the attunement opportunity, one of the attunement learning opportunities here, is to. Um, Your phone is just wrong. Yeah, I was supposed to turn it off. I forgot. Um, is yeah, is to tune into that, you know, and also there's, you know, there's within the whole Byron Katie, you know, what's your business, what's not your business, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes in serve and over serving, you can be plugging up somebody else's mm -hmm. business. So really, kind of again going back to attunement or checking in um, and staying open to what is actually as opposed to what we thought yesterday um, is is really part of serving in in my view um, and yeah love it in action and love it in action can be standing still mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? yeah. mm -hmm. or um, yeah any other questions yes Dominique I feel that our principles, you know, uh, can help get a healthy balance because if we bring together love in action with inner listening and co-creation not only with nature but with each other, we, we, we will find balance mm -hmm. because it's about sharing what needs to be shared and not to feel, you know, we have to hold the whole world on our shoulders. From the inner listening is about feeling what is right for us to do. And bringing love in action is bringing an energy that is nourishing. And another thing I think just not right now is about the game of transformation. Mm -hmm. And it brings like a real service. Me to fulfill somebody else needs. Mm -hmm. So if the question is, you know, was it received? You know? Mm. Was it received? And to keep this also as an awareness, to check if it is needed, if it has been received, uh, our three principles and these questions can really bring another dimension about just service. Mm -hmm.
and make it fun too. Mm. Thank you. Comments on that? Oh yeah, I, I like bringing up the game. I haven't remembered that yet. But it also is starts with what would serve you. Yeah. You know, I land on a service square. What would serve you? Yeah. Not I have this great idea. <laughs> I'm going to lay it on. Yeah. So that's a good reminder. Mm. As is most of the game. Oh, is that what happens? You land on a service square. You land on a service square, and God asks people to serve you? You yeah. have to then choose whether you want to serve another person or God. Uh, and then or yourself. You ask, yeah. Or yourself. Or yourself. Yeah. And then you have to ask what would serve. Right. And you need a wordless, tokens, to be allowed to serve. And at the end, you ask the person, do you feel served? Yeah, and then the whole package. Yeah. The token yeah. as you go up the yeah. next level. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good game. I would want to come back to, to your assumption, Roger, of, of the time together that we've been tuning into what the world needs, speak about service and, work and, mm -hmm. and needs, and I think about what we can offer because I think we've gone about it completely the other way of being, you know, what piece of the puzzle does the foundation hold? What is, what are we in essence? And how can we be the best that we are and revitalize our founding principles and really live them? And, and in that way, magnetize people here to take that out into their lives and into the world. But so, so I just wanted to... Mm -hmm. To say well, I have not been really here. So, I mean, no, I know, but that's and it was an assumption. It was an assumption informed by the fact that uh, we recently did a, uh, a community survey in which, you know, some like 339 of us actually filled out a, sur a survey about where we are and what we see. And they actually began with the question, um, you know, what, what, what do you see the community serving? What purpose do you see the community serving? So I think I was a little bit influenced by that rather than, uh, I just assumed Indeed, that, that you might have done something similar this week, but you're telling me that's not what you did. Sorry. It's all, not what we did for five weeks, actually. For five weeks, we were tuning in. When you say, you know, just be who you are, that's a very mysterious assignment <laughs> because that's the whole thing of life is to find out, actually. So mm. it's, it's finding out who are we as a Fintorn Foundation and who, who are we in this time. Yeah. In this situation. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I will just be slightly critical here and say that. Um, <laughs> That's you know, not what, I, what I what I what I think I've heard you say is that hey, you know, we are who we are, and we just need to carry on, carry, keep on keeping on. No. And that's not. That's, that's that's you must have other. <laughs> no, no, I, I, that's just what I. But I, <laughs> okay. what we can discuss this matter. We're here with. It's on camera. We can meet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So, I mean, I, to my mind, part of what I'm constantly doing is trying to figure out, you know, what purpose we can serve that would serve the larger world. That's, that's where my attention arrests. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that's not where the attention has been in these past five weeks. Is that what you're saying? I think, yeah. Well, that is confused here, and I don't know if it's on topic still. If you say, you know, what, what purpose can we serve? No, what is our deepest purpose to be? Mm -hmm. What is our deepest purpose? And my assumption, your answer was that, that you know, we are an energy, of, uh, we are a transformational field, and basically what we got to do is just carry on being that and doing that. Is that right? Is that what I heard you say or not? For me, it's the, the real recognition that we are a transformational field, and how can we nourish that and really serve that? And how can the founding principles support us in that, support us as we're part of that? And, and this is a trusting what it is that wants to emerge and how we listen to what the need is and, and what it is we also, what, what can we offer in that space? So it's felt quite a creative space. So it's, and it does feel like, who are we now? Yeah. Who are we now? That's what I thought it was. With a deep, deep foundation. And That's the right question. Mm -hmm. in many respects, I think. Does that not also though beg the question of not only where are we now, but where is where is the the yeah. bigger picture now? Yeah. And how do we fit into the bigger picture? Are we 
You know, are we, are we flowing with the tide? Are we against the tide? I mean, what's your sense of, around that, if you have it, Murray? I mean, is there a... I mean, the bigger picture that I get to see through the lens as I look looks increasingly dark and difficult. <laughs> mm. um, and I think for every lifetime and every generation, it always looked dark and difficult. Um, and our capacity as humans to make it even bigger dark and difficult <laughs> is astounding to mm. me. Mm. Um, so, you know, and the way I find hopes is that you know, when the Finnhorn Foundation was relatively unique in 1975, or four or two, and there's lots of centers now with a similar impulse. Mm -hmm. um, and <coughs> that, that feels like us doing our work. <laughs> um, and that feels like us, us continuing to do our work because there's not enough of those centers, but there's certainly a lot mm -hmm. more. Um, and there's not enough switched on people, but there are a lot more. Um, and our path generally here has been one heart at a time and just a kind of opening space. Um, we're not, you know, our, I often think we're the flip, the, the tantric side, the flip side of a pattern. We don't give a lot of dogma, so there isn't a lot to hold on to. But people after a bit of opening will go in and specialize in some aspect of their next steps. And around here it's often been interfaith or some kind of counseling or mentoring or coaching or you know, something that will skill them up to help even better or serve even better. So in that sense, is if that's the field we're nurturing in, it draws more people through like a um, mm. and pops us out. I mean, we didn't leave, but lots of people have left. And we know lots of them that are doing wonderful things all over the place. Um, so that that's what we can do, and we can't do everything, and we can't do it all, and we can't do it like other people do it, because anthroposophy does it differently, and Thich Nhat Hanh does it differently, and Oroville does it differently, and whoever else we can think of mm. will all be doing it differently. Mm. So we have to do it the way that we're charged to do it, it's sort of Angus's, we're an intended community. Um, and I more or less believe that mm. too. I think we are. Um, we're probably an intended species, even, <laughs> you know, with lots of creative potential. Um, so, you know, I haven't heard yet too much about the new initiatives, but that would be like the next expressions. Because mm. it isn't a time just to sit and only meditate on the Golden Globe. It is time to take that and action it in various ways. Mm. Um, and whether that's carrying wood chop water or um, yeah. whatever else, that's. The proof is in the pudding. So I think we're still, I think we're still cooking some puddings. <laughs> Do you want to add anything to that, Roger? Well, I thought I heard sort of a subtext, which kind of like I touched on, but moved on quickly. But what the part of your answer was that there's a sense in which we feel like maybe we've done our thing. Mm -hmm. And I certainly have that feeling. Mm -hmm from time to time. And so therefore I wonder whether, I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's various ways in which we can say we're getting better at what we do, we're extending ourselves further, the legal age network is moving into the world, it's being recognized by governments, I mean, there's how many thousand eco villages are there in the world, and you know, all this kind of stuff. I mean, at, at that level we're getting bigger, better, and more successful. Uh, and yet, um, you know, I do have this feeling that <laughs> that let's put it this way: I was in Paris for the for the climate stuff. I went downstairs from in my uh, in my uh, place of abode, which was basically a youth hostel, a converted youth hostel. I sat down. In the audience for an event which was happening that I think it was going to be Charles Weidenstein and um, and a woman named Kathy Amy Goodman who was a radio presenter in America. You know, some, some really hot stuff on the stage. I sat down in the middle of the audience and I, I sat next to an old guy and I, I said, Hi. He said, well, Who are you guys? I'm, my name is Roger Rodgers from Finmore. Oh, yeah, big veg. <laughs> <laughs> big veg. You know, I mean, big veg. 
I mean, th that's still yeah. how Findhorn is primarily known in the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to an old and guy. all the stuff that was around Big guy. Rich. Sorry? To an old guy. Yeah, to an old guy from California. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I think Maybe he knew you, actually. I think he knew you. Maybe not to the world. I know. But, um, I mean, you know, that whole thing was a, was a, was a miracle and it was a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder, you know, whether that's still who we are. And what I think I also hear you saying is that we realize that that is who we are and we just have to carry on being that and carry on. Is that not what I heard you say? See how, how, see how, how much more creative we can be with that? I feel it's, it's part of our history and it's honoring that and who we, we're exploring who we are now mm. and what our offering is now. And there's an incredible richness behind us that we're not resting on that, but it's still very relevant. But it, I think it's an exploration. We're inquiring, we're not really sure, we're listening, we're... What's other people's sense of the time together? I don't yeah. think the job is done, Roger. No. I, I really don't think the job is done. I mean, every week an experience week comes through, or a spiritual practice week comes through, and we, I mean, I was privileged to hear um, feedback from a German FX group that recently came, and they were wanting more eco-village stuff, and they, they, they got given a really creatively put together FX week with eco-village stuff. And at the end of the day, um, they took so much away from the spiritual um, curriculum. You know, like in the beginning, I was like, oh, is this going to go? Uh, they didn't really come for that. And the job is not done. Yeah. We still have, the, yeah, Pinton has got that uniqueness of the three principles to offer the world. Mm -hmm. It seems like the world outside is continuously producing more and more generations still more and more generations of people who have that hunger uh -huh. for that more, for there's got to be better more and different ways of living and being in this world. Mm -hmm. The world is still creating, the societies, the cities, the countries are still producing so many people that have that hunger because they're not getting it anywhere else. And mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. I really believe that we still have a, a very, they, they are, I'm always so relieved that we went at our third point, our principles, is um, what we heard in the four weeks come up and up again, how they're still so relevant. Um, and I, I would have been shocked if we had actually left, I probably would have been one of the first out of the door. Because um, that's why I'm here, is that they're so relevant. Mm. That, that was never in question. Nope. For me. So when that mm. came up, it was like, of course, but the, the, the subtlety in the obvious, which you beautifully phrased, because I was frustrated, it's like, it's so obvious, come on, what's mm. next? Mm. But dropping into, um, yes. And also collectively, consciously say, yeah. yes, this is it. It's not like, okay, you hear it and you practice it, but we don't talk about it. Mm. To say that is truly also our yardstick for for programs, for, for what we do. Does, is it an expression mm -hmm. of the transformational field? Is it an expression of our principles? Mm -hmm. And is it the best expression? And, you know, when you say, are you just going to continue being who you are? It, it sounds a bit like uh, low energy. Whereas, you know, as a person, I can only continue to be who I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm still finding out what that is. Mm -hmm. And I think a way of conscious living is, is consciously finding out what that is. And it's also sometimes being in process and then reading through a 20-year-old, you know, a, a diary that I wrote 20 years ago and say, oh, I already knew it back then. I phrased it beautifully and I'm still discovering it. So, so can we be fresh in that discovery mm. and so be alive, you know, in the yeah, in, in the beauty of of that way of living? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I will. The, the experience week groups definitely are my reminder. Yeah. Of the fact that, that whatever it is we're doing here is still alive. Which is, uh, no question about that. Um, 
Sorry, mm -hmm. Roger. Dominic, you had a question or a comment? You know, when I hear the big veg. When you hear what? The, the big, big veg. The big veg. From the big veg. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in a way, it's really our challenge, and it has been for the last 40 years, because mm -hmm. the big veg, you know, were just at 45 a short years. time. Yeah. And then people are still drawn with this image, you know? And then they come here. And sometimes through experience week or different programs, they don't go to the garden. Oh. No, they, they don't even you know, enjoy the gardens, the field of gardens. And still, at the end of the week, they have got exactly what they needed. <laughs> And it's, it's, back there. Yeah. It's, 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 it's exactly, you know, what is working, what is the transformative field here. Because we have even to go against the picture and the disappointment of the people. Mm. And it still works. Mm. Mm. And through not only the experience week, but through, you know, I'm here, I, I, so, I'm so privileged to go through the whole Ascension Pindle program. Oh. And, ah, oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Dominic. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can we go, sorry, Dominic, that's fantastic. Thanks very much for coming. Um, can we look again, maybe, can we try maybe looking at service beyond Findhorn? Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was Ramana Maharishi who said the greatest service is self-realization. Mm. Obviously, there's a Findhorn connection there, but um, what's your comment on that, uh, Mari? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, I mean, it, yes. That, you know, if to the extent that many of us were self-realized, our leaders in political parties were self-realized. Our, you know, our generals and our media ownerships were self-realized. We would be in a, you know, we'd have different challenges than the ones we have right now. <laughs> um, so that would be that would be the, a way of describe. It's a way of describing the goal. It's a way of being who we are. It's a way of discovering who we are. It's a way of mm -hmm. giving that attention, not for. Yeah, for lots of the same ways we've already mentioned, it kind of recycles the the highest unfolding potential, the emergent, the mm. the the way of the way of being that serves. Mm. Um, and I would assume, and it is an assumption on my part, that self-realized beings <laughs> serve really well. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're pupils, they're disciples, the energy field they generate, whatever else. And there's endless little you know, there's research projects around getting mm -hmm. all the TM people meditating in the city and the crime goes down or whatever else. Yeah. And that's just not self-realized people. But, um, and I'm quite sure that the few self-realized people we do have on the planet are doing a fabulous job. Um, as historically we have known that Aurobindo did this or whoever else did that to mm -hmm. just even Peter and Eileen and their network of light in the 60s, when it all felt like it was all going to hell in a handbasket very quickly. Um, you know, as I said, every generation is up against what looks like about as dire as possible. We're all focused on that. Yeah, right. And they were their network of light. And they were, I'm sure they were part, part of a stabilizing process. So that sort of inner work, or our outer work with an inner component of, of inner direction and, and connection, is. Um, probably the most vitally required service mm -hmm. for a planet that, from where I look, <laughs> needs a lot of service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Roger? Well, where my attention has been going in reply to your question is, is um, to a place where an extraordinary amount of my attention has been in the last couple of days, namely <coughs> reading about the U.S. elections. Oh. Mm -hmm. and, um, and trying to, you know, yeah. Trying to get a handle on this guy Trump and where he's coming from and so forth, um, trying to understand the phenomenon that he speaks to, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, I, I, what I'm aware of is that I am kind of like responding to him and assessing him and judging him indeed mm -hmm. from some kind of 
you know, sense about the extent to which he is self-realized. <laughs> and, and then you compare it to someone like Obama, who is, you know, quiet and dignified and you know, statesmanlike and, and, you know, the, once again, I'm using that, my image of what it means to be self-realized mm. to kind of like assess these characters. I, I think we all are, in some sense. You know, I mean, we're basically trying to figure out whether this person speaks for me or expresses my values. Um, and clearly, you know, the progressive parts of humanity don't seem to think, don't seem to perceive Trump as, as being there. Yeah. Um, regressive. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, across the board, I mean, I, I mean, I look at all those guys, and, and you know, I find myself essentially assessing them in terms of where they stand and what they stand for, and mm. you know, in terms of my image about what a, a, a proper politician should be. Mm. And I, some kind of idea about, you know, how benevolent they are, um, their capacity to inspire, and, and the bitter irony is noticing that the, the, the contrast for me as a Democrat is between, you know, someone who's apparently much more inspirational like Bernie Sanders and someone who is apparently less inspirational to many people, maybe Hillary Clinton, and trying to figure out, you know, assessing Bernie's capacity to really make a difference, mm -hmm. as opposed to simply striking a, almost a false light fault with a false hope, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fascinating process. But I think I think there's somewhere somewhere in there. My 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 criterion is my sense about what a self-realized person would be. Mm -hmm. Other questions and comments from the audience. Other than on the U.S. presidential election. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the presidential election is also a fair game, and I don't want that to be there if you want Somehow to. went to the recognition crisis. <laughs> <laughs> European centric, perhaps. Yeah. Um, but anyway, there's very difficult things happening. I mean, does anyone right? in the audience have an experience of service where they felt, yes, this is, this is really me? You know, maybe I'm not describing it very well, but this sense of, if you like, alignment and inner peace and, yeah. You know, and would you be willing to share that? I mean, like a light bulb moment or something that this is really, you know, who I am. Anyone? <laughs> I've, I've had uh, peak experiences. Ah, great. Yeah. Um, as a chair of the trustees of the Fintern Foundation. Cool. Where in leading the process of our meetings, I felt utterly and completely present without being there. And I, I felt that, that, you know, I don't know, I was in a field and some things wanted to become clear or emerge and I was like directing a play without knowing the script and just being guided somehow and trusting that whatever came out of my mouth was the right thing and it's, it's been an amazing experience. Mm, wonderful. So. I've had moments like that too. I had moments like that when I did, so as you may or may not know about me, I've done about nine conferences oh, here. I was thinking that was and um, the first big one was called The World Crisis in the Homes of Life, 76. And, and um, you know, Peter kind of like supported me to do it and, but, you know, there came a certain point where it just everything just sort of like it was kind of a whoosh, <laughs> you know, it was at my back. Yeah. And yeah, I just felt like this is me. This is me. This is what I'm meant to be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, just felt like being in the groove, really. Mm -hmm. I'm sure others of you have had similar experiences. And if you haven't, what are you doing here? <laughs> 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 Any other questions or comments? That it, it brings me back to the question that came up earlier, and I forget exactly how it was phrased, but how do we know when it's in service to the whole? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and we kind of moved on from that question where I was contemplating on it at the time, contemplating it at the time, and it was that sense of, you know, when I just know, it's just, it's just within me. It's like you know an intuitive impulse, or it's just there's an energy there. There's a flow, and it's just like there's a sense of trust. It's something's coming through and moving, and it's um, just synchronicities yes. tend to really help yeah, as well. Yeah. It has yeah, its yeah. own yeah. things kind of that you you know can't imagine do yeah. come into the. So that for me is kind of like a that that's the way it's like well, yeah it's. I think at times like that, then it, it must be in service to the whole. It's mm -hmm. because it's yeah, just I mean, moving through. How the universe responds to your initiative is obviously a pretty good sign about whether you want the money or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other my questions? Sense Similar, yeah. My sense of separation disappears just to follow on mm -hmm. from that. Yeah. So, like, once in the flow, my sense of my personality and myself kind of dissolves and it's a oneness and it's a flow. Mm. But a sense of separation seems to dissolve in moments like that. Yeah. And I that brought me I really resonated with your point, uh, Roger, around when we seem to be in that serving, how we get ourselves out of the way. I can't remember how many times I've taken myself so important and once I got back into the serving position <laughs> I could actually get myself out of the way and receive all the gifts that there are for me as well yeah. as giving. Yeah. So um, those delightful moments you spoke about that arise when we open ourselves up to it and once we are in that flow. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I honestly think that if, that if Finhorn has a yoga, it is service. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it is exactly what you're talking about. If Finhorn has a yoga, it is precisely that kind of service. We're not getting ourselves out of the way and mm. responding to what is, is being asked of us, really. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really great catalyst, too, to spiritual development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't worry. Money yeah, when I was thinking, of, I'm not sure I like the service word now that I have to think about it. Uh, responsiveness was another, I was trying to think of other ways of expressing something similar. Um, and I think we'll probably stick with service in lots of ways, but res that, that sense of responsiveness of being capable of being fed to being showing up at the right time when something else can be path acknowledged, appreciated, loved, carried, whatever it is. That sort of um, so yeah, responsive from an inner impulse and responsive to what the what the world, what, which you know maybe a piece of litter, but whatever it is, is asking, <laughs> responding to me, and then something else happens. You know. Um, so often, in, in my experience, just doing something relatively small sometimes enables something much more uh, profound or significant to show up, which wouldn't have shown up if I wasn't doing something small. Um, I used to think about that in the Steiner School. We'd do a jumble sale and earn 200 pounds, and somebody would write us a check for 1,000 that came in the mail the next morning. Mm -hmm. And we'd go, and not connected, connected. Um, mm -hmm. but similar, so yeah, just doing what we're doing, the part that we can do, um, enables more to come, mm -hmm. even if it isn't everything needed. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think this place, amongst probably lots of other places, really sharpens that, those learn, it's a learning field, it's a transformational field, and within that it's a learning field. I mean, part of me has a transformational field I like, I get it, but I, but like, what's the verb and what's the outcome? It's <laughs> sort of like, what are we transforming into, frogs? Um, mm. what, <laughs> yeah. You know, there's lots of these. Yeah, princesses, 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 right, and princes. Um, so there's there needs a, a you know within that understanding there needs to also be a little bit of yeah more of an output or a direction direct, yeah. more directional than just that. Um, so yes, there's language that we understand because we just do, and then there's how to how to share that in a way that it um, communicates all of those things. Um, it's probably where artists come in and do something. Mm. Other questions? Yeah. And Nobody? to follow, I feel that you know, empowering people to trust mm. their inner voice and their inner promptings mm. is major. 
Because it could be very small, it could be bigger. But it reminds me of Sheila, you know, triggering Peter once because he had an idea of calling somebody and he didn't it he didn't do it immediately. And she told him she told him, you know, do it immediately. And it's this obedience of this inner voice and the trust, the confidence that it is worth doing that help has going with the flow and really serve for me. And being in this magic uh, oneness with what is calling. Yeah. Do you think there's um, um do you think there's a preponderance um, in the world to serve ourselves as opposed to serving others? Absolutely. And how how might in we the world, in the Western world? Yeah. Okay. So how how would you say we might we might redress that problem? By praying that evolution is true. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, I mean. It's like, when is a person ready to come to Finland? You know, uh, I don't think we get a whole lot of people who are here to uh, to, to, to self-serve. Mm -hmm. You know, in a way, it's almost like uh, the price of admission is, the, is, 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 is being at least prepared to consider the possibility of leaving your ego at the door. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, in the world, you know, if you don't look after yourself, who's going to look after you? I mean, that, 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 that Jewish expression, where is it? You know, I forget, I mean, it, it, the gist of it is, if you don't look after yourself, who's going to do that? Who's going to do that? So, I mean, you know, that, that's part of my problem with, with the world. That's part of the reason why I live here. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a bit jungly out there. And, you know, when I look at the world, you know, when I'm not looking at the U.S. election, I'm oftentimes looking at refugee camps <laughs> in Greece. You know, I keep asking, isn't there something we can do about that? <coughs> and of course, we are doing what we can with, with, with having money and clothes and so forth, but uh, it's a drop in the bucket. The mm. bucket is huge. Mm. Mm. Sorry. But I don't think I don't I don't think there's any way you can get people to to stop being egocentric. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, think, I mean I think life is a is a process which brings the best of them, some of the of the, of the more fort, the more fortunate of them, into a place where they cease to be self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Curiously, I was with the Healthy Birth Healthy Earth team earlier today. Mm -hmm. um, and one would say it starts there, you know. It's like fear, or you know, the the yeah, me not. first thing yeah. is is very fear based, mm -hmm. and that comes from um, exper genuine experience that feels like a you know a proper response to a genuine experience. Yeah. Yeah. But working with you know with a holistic education, working with um, changing the whole approach to. Um, to birth, even, um, would be a good place to start. Probably get, you know, take about three generations at fastest track. But, uh, you know, and given that is, there's a lot of people who, you know, then there's all the kinds of healing work. But there has to be a receptivity. And I'm also working with um, a family member who is in dire straits and is, off, is being offered lots of supports and doesn't know how to say yes to any of them. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a receptivity um, and, you know what, prayer works, they say, researched, valid, mm. um, evidence-based, <laughs> prayer works, uh, meditation works, and, but, you know, changing someone else doesn't work. Mm. So then it's just about expanding that, that imagination within ourselves to the point where it's a transformation you know, where it can, it can spread out. But mm. yeah, no, it's you know, it's, I'm sure it's on the wicked problem list. That um, 
we really can't, you know, we can't change anything that doesn't want to change it. Mm. I imagine yeah, that other questions? Maybe, maybe we've all been self-serving at different times in our lives, mm -hmm. and then something yeah. shifts in us, or our awareness is like, we just think that there's, there must be something more than this, and some of us might be called here, or we might be called to other centres, and... Um, but I think we all have our own journey in life, and, and some may just go through life just on that one track and not changing. But if, mm. if more of us are coming to a place like this and becoming more conscious and then going back out into the world and embodying this, then I'm sure there's this ripple effect, and uh, I think that's part of our work, like some of us being mm. here. And, but I, I really believe in it, it being exponential. So mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's well, natural? It, it, well, this sense of ripple when more of us are becoming self-aware, then yeah. it will. Yeah, yeah. Impact well, that's one of the few things people can point to: the hundredth monkey, etc. Mm -hmm. well, so I think the, there is self-servingness in the world, but it's also easy to sit here and think the others are self-serving, and mm -hmm. we somehow are not. And mm -hmm. I don't live here, and I know a lot of people who. Art. Are not self-serving. They, mm -hmm. they, you know, and and the circle of people they are serving might be smaller or might be bigger. Yeah, yeah. They do things for their neighbors and for their elderly mothers and for somebody else's elderly mother. So, so I wouldn't want to generalize like that. Mm -hmm. And for me, part of of here is also. Uh, not just in kind of the horizontal with other people, but but that we're serving uh, a much larger cosmic new story. Uh, new story uh, but that there are many entities living in other dimensions, and that we need to fulfill our our little human bit, but that we are maintaining this this entity, this garden, this this place uh, because it serves somehow a cosmic purpose that we cannot wrap our little brains around mm -hmm. but that that is also an element of yeah of, of service of, of knowing that and mm -hmm. of of inviting that in so that principle of co-creation with nature or co-creation with the whole of life that that we don't make ourselves so big as humans that we are not we are the determining factor in some things, but we're not the determining factor in many things. And yeah, can can we live as part of life and not think we're the whole of life? Mm. Can we let life live us? Mm -hmm. Can mm. we let life live us? Mm. Coherent and harmonious ways. Right. You want to comment on? Yeah, let life live us. And, yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does feel like there's, you know, when we were here in the 70s, and even, you know, there was like, the, even if you read David Spangler's Birth of a New Age, you know, there's the, there's the pulling away, and you, you know, talk about seeing it with Trump and, and Bernie Sanders, or even Corbyn and Cameron in the UK. Um, you know, the, it, it's, very, it's very polarized, and it was very polarized, and now it's even more polarized. Well, they told us it was going to do that. <laughs> and it's doing that. Um, and they told us we had to hold steady and be centered, and, and we do. Um, so, yes, there's, there's a lot. It's just stronger. It's just a stronger yeah. dose of what's always been around. Um, or it's our particular strong dose of what's always been around. Um, and within that, there's serving and self-serving and you know when we can get those to be pretty much the same but we're <laughs> we've got a prayer and a hope um, mm -hmm. but there's yeah there's a lot of just a lot of it seems like a lot of fear a lot of really grim death fear out there also and somehow that quality is attractive to power and our sort of goodwill quality <laughs> is attracted to background activities. You know, the blessed unrest, I, I really like Paul Hawkins, you know, endless reign of peace, justice, and environmental organizations that are springing up everywhere, and you can't even, 
you know, you can sit here a year and it, or at least a week and it would still be rolling on and on and on and on and on. So that's where, you know, that's the network. And we used to say that you know, the, if that's all just in place and when the time comes when it's, it's the shit hits the fan enough, you know, we'll have all this, we'll have another pattern, another model, um, another way of being. And I think for this little place as, as Spinhorn, it is the next thing to do. Sustainability is like, Everybody's, every university is doing lots of it, but we still, we aren't yet good at necessarily, um, we aren't expert yet at, at, at conflict facilitation or community, but we are, we're as with, the, with all the eco stuff, we were just trying out stuff. And when, now we put it together and it looks like quite a well, you know, conceived package, but it didn't happen that way. It was like little burts and starts and initiatives, and nobody wanted you to build a barrel, and nobody liked the field of dreams, and everybody thought Alan Watson should just go home and leave us alone, and 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 and, and everything that you know that nobody loved, somebody stayed with, and is our you know our the crown jewels, and it's the same with the next process. You know, our processes, not necessarily our structures, but some of our ways of being, our ways of thinking about things. They're, they're not formed, they, haven't, they are coming into existence. Um, mm. And that's our work here. And I'm sure lots of other places, I know lots of other places are struggling with similar. How do you do community? How do you stay in loving connection with somebody that you completely disagree with? <laughs> you know, that's, that's completely horrible and difficult. But that's if you know if we can't do it here. How are we expecting Syria to shape up and be someplace that anybody can live? Mm. Um, so it's you know in some ways we have a very privileged task, um, but it's also earnestly important, and that's our service and that's our counterpoint mm. to some other approaches to the challenges, mm. which don't look like they're going to be particularly healthy or successful. Mm. Um, mm. And are self-serving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for um, that. Yeah, yeah. So. Other questions? Yes, please. Um, what do you think is the best way to teach children about um, service? One for you, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think too. Um, with little children, I think the best thing is just doing, being, do, being, doing. Um, teaching per se, uh, word, you know, whatever, even in, with adults, whatever, words have like, you know, sort of 8% of the communication is your words and the rest is your, is your embodiment and your field and all the rest of it. So I think if we want children to be kind and polite and helpful, we have to treat children kindly <laughs> and help them and be polite to them. Um, and, you know, just generally create um, an environment around them that um, offers that and some examples and some repetition and good rhythms I think are really good for children that this is how we do it and this is how we do it. Um, and being willing to be the adult in the situation also really helps a child, which sometimes has been a struggle for parents who want the children to lead on what they should eat or what they should wear or whatever else. It's okay to tell the kid this is how it is um, with some with some loving kindness, um, but loving I would say loving kindness. You know that's certainly up till about seven, eight, nine, and then later on there can be service projects and all sorts of stuff. But then, but it's you know they say you learn most of your innate habits by the time you're three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, you know, and I would imagine the first year is probably the biggest of the first three. So that just needs. You know, caring, loving, responsive attention that has a little being be safe. Yeah, and maybe it's that, then then the lots can grow from there. Yeah, maybe that's the important thing about um, spreading the idea of service, uh, not only trying to teach other ad adults, but maybe to just teach uh, teach our children mm. because they are the future. Sure. Well, I've just read this book. Uh, Called Boomeritis, which <laughs> it's been around a while. Um, has it been around a while? Have you read it? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, basically, by this guy came a little bit, right? It's about, it's about the, this problem dynamic stuff. Um, and he claims, his, I don't believe he's right about it, I'm asking you. I mean, he claims that we all have to go through 
all of those stages in order to get to um, the green meme and get beyond the green meme into uh, what the yellow and the, and the turquoise. Um, and that suggests that you know the kids need to go through that self-absorbed hmm. stuff. Oh yeah, I didn't say anything that they, they couldn't be who they are. Mm. They'll be who they are and they'll do what they do. But it's how we respond to that and how we and how we are with them that will be what mm. what fill, feeds their moral fiber or their. You mean it's possible to teach them service? They are born. Oh. They're born. Yeah, born they just want, children, children are a natural service. You just watch a two year old following mum or dad around the house, just wanting to do everything they are doing as well. Yeah, that's and, I mean, it's something that we put in the way of that, actually. Yeah. You know, they, they will, they will, uh, from, and, and they will go through their, their self absorption stuff as well. It, it all happens. It happens naturally, and we're there to hold and to harness and to help. Mm -hmm along those processes, mm. but they, they, they actually can teach us a thing or two about mm -hmm. observing, particularly when they're very little. They are very sensitive. I still remember, you know, uh, the son of my cousin, and he was only 18 months old, and he wanted a toy, and he played with the toy because the children were not there. But before leaving, he had to give back the toy. And I still remember he wanted to keep it and explaining him, you know, how the other children, when they would come back, would be disappointed if the toy was not there anymore. And it was amazing because, you know, I tried, you know, first. And, but, and he really got it and gave it back. So I think they are more sensitive sometimes than we think. Mm -hmm. We have to try and to show them and to really support them in that way. Mm -hmm. I think the Finthorn children, so to say, the people who grew up here, that I know, are really great people. But it was not here. It was no, 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 it wasn't here. But I think the people who yeah, grew yeah. up in Victoria, yeah, yeah. who were born here or raised here and grew up here, like they're a tribute to, to parenting the Victorian way. I just need to say that I'm impressed by your belief, but uh, I'm really, I'm really not honored. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you are a true believer. I am. Yes. <laughs> <You are. laughs> But yeah, no, I, yes, I mean, I, I agree with you that um, making, <laughs> making the circumstances healthy for little people um, <laughs> is really, really important. Mm -hmm. And what you can offer to a young person is a seed for a long time to come. Mm -hmm. And the younger, the better in lots of ways, which doesn't mean nursery school should start younger, but, you know, maybe mothers should be, you know, whatever, whatever it takes. There's the, as many societal kind of um, solutions or problems with that, but it's, it's vital. Absolutely. It's not, however, Finkhorn's core mission, and it never has been. <laughs> and it was quite startlingly not at the beginning when Peter was Absolutely. just definitely like, get that kid out of here. Um, so it, it's been a bit of work within this community to have children have a place and find the, you know, the place that works for children and families and everyone else. And within the foundation, there are actually very few families because um, it worked less and less well after a bit of a blip. Um, but within the community, it's thriving. You know, there are so many young people under about seven years old in the community right now, and there's quite a lot of attention. And that's, and that's where it belongs, you know, uh, in terms of this place. And, <coughs> And again, we don't have any real experts in child care or child rearing or anything here, but we are attuning and figuring it out as we go along. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Oriel does quite a lot of that. Okay, we have a few experts. <laughs> Christine, did you have a comment on that? Yeah, I, I just a few days ago I saw this really beautiful little YouTube clip, and it was these little, I think they were little Chinese or like Asian children, they were, were in like, Kindy, so maybe four years old, they were sitting around in a circle in their school uniform. And they were just being shown like, you know, to just never stay to each other. And they give each other a hug. 
and it just went around the circle, and it was just, and some of them got distracted by the camera and kind of forgot what to do, and it was just the sweetest little circle, and for me there's that sense of, you know, children or nurturing that sense of, you know, appreciating the other, feeling appreciated, and in that, like, that sense of care and wanting to serve and support, and for me, it was just this gorgeous little circle, like a little Flinborn circle that wasn't Flinborn at all. But I was like, oh yeah, that's something I'd like to do here. Yeah, just, um, but I think appreciate, like really feeling loved and appreciated from a young age. I think was then nurtured. And yeah, I was just exposed to a um, journal of psychology article that I read, and it, it said teaching philosophy to children was having these various impacts, and it was. They had 26 schools, and they clocked them for a number of years, and 22 schools that didn't teach philosophy. And philosophy turned out to be 40 minutes a week, sitting in a circle and talking about issues or talking about themselves and being sparked, having a dialogue about something, learning to, to talk to each other. And, the, and they were generally, this, this whole experiment was happening in, in not very um, upmarket schools, you know, struggling schools, let's say. And they discovered that the kids who had this opportunity wow. to spend 40 minutes a week in their probably class of 35 kids or 25 kids and share a little bit about some meaningful topic that they engaged with excelled in maths and English mm -hmm. over and above the school that didn't um, over a, a, you know, a longer period of time. So, mm -hmm. hey, you know, <laughs> it's not a, that's not a lot to, um, do you think it was social, developing emotional and social connection or intelligence, or what do you think it was? They just, they, the way they structured the, the study is they just, these people did it, these people didn't, these kids scored higher than before, these kids didn't mm -hmm. score differently. That's, it was, you know, it's quite, Cut uh, out. yeah, but you know that there's other factors and you can dream into it. Mm -hmm. um, so. Any other questions? I think I'm going to bring it to a close. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you both very much. And uh, yeah, wonderful and great contributions um, from everyone this evening. So thank you very much. And uh, may love and peace go with you. Thank you, thank you for your service, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it has been a pleasure for me, actually. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good. Yes, it's always fun to listen to you, Usually, Harry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you both very much. It's been fantastic. Thank you. And um, thank you all for coming. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone going back to the bar? Excuse you, me? Are you going back to the park? Yeah. I'm going back to the park. Can I come with you? Yes. Thank you. Probably safer, but not. Necessarily, my indicator only works sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I have new brakes. <laughs> yes, I have my hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.